Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we're going to calculate some more Christoffel symbols and some Ricci tensor components. In particular, we are going to do this for the metric used to prove Birkhoff's theorem. This theorem, which we're not going to prove now, but it states that the Schwarzschild solution holds even in a time-dependent metric as well. This is a nice theorem because it allows us to say something about a far wider class of metrics than the Schwarzschild metric originally covers by using the same metric with the two functions depending on time. And let's go ahead and write down the metric that I'm referring to. So in this lecture, we will be considering the following metric ds squared is equal to minus some a of r and t dt squared plus another function b of r and t dr squared plus r squared d theta squared plus sine squared theta d phi squared. Now the ordinary Schwarzschild solution looks the same as this one, but Instead of having this and this depend on R and T, they just depend on R. And the derivation of the Schwarzschild metric, by that I mean what A and B actually are, once you calculate the Christoffel symbols and the Ricci tensor components and demand that it satisfies the Newtonian conditions, can be found everywhere. Every GR book, every YouTube channel about GR is going to have this derivation. So. I don't really have anything new to add to the discussion. That's why I'm gonna calculate the components that you find when you let these A and B functions be time dependent as well. And the form of this metric that we need in this lecture is gonna be a bit more unwieldy, but it is useful. So we're using G mu nu is a diagonal matrix. It's the diagonal matrix of minus A, b r squared and r squared sine squared theta which of course immediately tells us that the inverse metric g mu nu is diagonal matrix of 1 over a minus 1 over a sorry 1 over b 1 over r squared and 1 over r squared sine squared theta of course now we don't need the long form of the metric anymore since we have all the information here. Okay. Incidentally, why is this true that we can just take one over the components? Well, it's always true because if I have a matrix that's diagonal and I multiply by the following matrix, when you multiply this out, you get a times one over a is one and you get b times one over b is one which is the identity matrix so this is actually the inverse matrix for this one and of course this will easily generalize to larger matrices as well it only works for diagonal matrices which fortunately are some of the most common metrics that we can encounter in general relativity All right, so let's compute the new Christoffel symbols first. We need the definition. We have gamma rho mu nu is equal to one half g rho lambda times d mu g nu lambda plus d nu g mu lambda minus d lambda g mu nu and I am going to tell you which ones are new. It's pretty easy to find out. Basically, you would start, oh, which one is new if I have a T up here? Then you put a mu nu down here and you work it out and you'd say, oh, if I let mu equal to this and nu equal to this, then it's gonna be non-zero. 
but I've skipped this boring step for you. You can do the same thing with, you know, R Mu Nu and all the other ones as well until you'd exhausted the list. I'm just going to tell you which ones are non-zero. So we have a new component, gamma TTT to be one half G. Now we have rho equal to T here, which tells us that lambda has to be equal to T as well, since the inverse metric is diagonal. Now everything is T here, so all these things are actually the same term. We have two of the same term minus one of the same term, that term being the time derivative of GTT. We can now evaluate this pretty easily. One half GTT is this component, minus one over A, times the time derivative of GTT. Watch out for the minus sign, where of course I'm using the dot to represent the time derivative, so I have, you know, A dot is dA by dt, and later I'm going to use A prime to be dA by dr, pretty standard notation. Dots are time, prime is space. And this simplifies to A dot over 2A. Looks pretty cool. Notice I am not going to use the exponential notation here. Um, there is a way to write these coefficients as uh, e to the minus 2a, for example, so that there wouldn't be any dividing. I'm not going to be doing that in this, in this lecture. I'm following the presentation of the GR book that I'm using, which is a uh, AZ, um, what's, what's the name of the book? Um, Einstein Gravity in a Nutshell. I can certainly put an Amazon link in the description. It's a great book. Definitely would recommend that you check it out. It contains what I'm doing now, of course, in the same format. So if you like this presentation, you can certainly feel free to check out the book. It's a great resource. Okay, another new component. Gamma TRR is going to be now one half G rho equals R, which forces lambda to be equal to r as well, since again, g mu nu is diagonal. So now we have some different terms here. We're gonna have the rth derivative of g r r. Well, that one's good, right? Yeah, that one's good. And then we're gonna have the rth derivative of, it's actually the same, yeah. Then we get uh, minus, d r of g mu nu. Let's see what we're doing wrong here. Okay. R derivative, oh no, I did make a mistake. Sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna have the mu derivative, which is the r derivative here, of g r Oh no, I wrote the wrong thing up here. Sorry guys, that's why everything's not working very well. This is a very tricky subject. It's very detail oriented. If you, if you miss one letter, everything is, is kaput. Let's try this again. Okay, the rth derivative of g r t. Okay, that is definitely zero because r t doesn't exist. And there's actually two of these, which is zero, minus the remaining term, which is the time derivative of GRR. That's the one that we want. So we get one half GTT again is minus one over A. Now you have the time derivative of GRR. GRR is up here, which is B. And these minus signs cancel b prime over 2a. b dot over 2a, sorry. So you get one symbol mixed up, it's entirely wrong. And we have one more symbol. Let's see if I can get this one. 
We have a new symbol, gamma R T R, which is, if we allow lambda be equal to R this time, one half of G R R. Now let's calculate these carefully. Gonna have time derivative of G R R. That one's good. And we're gonna have plus the R derivative of G T R. Well, that one's zero minus the R derivative of G T R, which is again zero. So we get one half GRR. Where is GRR? It's up here. Now we have the time derivative of GRR, which is B dot this time. So it becomes B dot over 2B. Okay, these are all the new new these are all the new Christoffel symbols or the Christ awful symbols, as some people like to call them, since they are sometimes difficult to calculate. It's pretty nitpicky. And we're going to calculate the Riki tensor components. We don't need anything that we've written here besides the results of the Christoffel symbols. And actually, I sense that because I've made so many mistakes, and drone on that this would be a good place to stop and start a new video. So I'm going to tell you in the next video that we are going to be calculating the new Riki tensor components. These are the R mu nu for the generalized Schwarzschild metric. Hope you will join me in that video to see the thrilling conclusion and the use of the Christoffel symbols. Thanks so much for um, watching this video and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.